quick tip. People often see something like this and they often think, oh, oh, I got some kind of a resonant frequency or some kind of an oscillation or something with this peak, right? No, that's not the case. Not always the case. If you plot the pre-filtered with the post-filtered, watch what happens. You see what you're looking at here. This is the pre-filtered gyro in the dotted curve and the post-filtered in the solid. And what's happening is basically this is the first fundamental of the of the first motor band right and and all that's happening is it's not quite targeting this portion of the band and that happens because you don't have the rpm min hertz quite low enough it seems to be showing up a little bit more these days because rpm has a thing called crossfade which fades out the attenuation strength of the notch filters f f uh, at some point above that min hertz point and by default that that fade range is set to 50 hertz in other words at 50 hertz above the the min hertz point that you've chosen which is by default 100 that's when it starts reducing the amount of attenuation power and so at 150 hertz it's starting to decrease and that's why we're still getting some of this mode residual motor band left over now it's interesting that in when the the individual actually added weight to the drone what happened was you see it more attenuated because with the weight it caused the motors to be uh, have a higher rpm and as such the the rpm was was within the range that was actually being filtered at, at by the notch filters but of course once the weight was taken off and it's lighter then you see the residual motor band so all you have to do in a case like this is actually just reduce the min hertz or the crossfade range Hope that helps.